Hey, what's up, Mavs fans? Kevin Gray, Mavericks pre- and post-game host on 97.1 The Freak on the Dallas Mavericks Radio Network. Appreciate you joining me here on my latest video. As we get you caught up on all things inside the Mavs, you can find me on Twitter at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to like and comment on this video and download the Inside the Mavs podcast, the official Mavericks podcast of 97.1 The Freak, wherever you get your podcast for free. The Mavericks continue to be engaged in a lot of trade chatter around the NBA. We've already seen a trade, a massive one go down, as, of course, all the conversation has been around Pascal Siakam and whether or not he would get moved before the February 8th NBA trade deadline. That is the case, as the Pacers are acquiring Pascal Siakam. The trade will send Bruce Brown, Jordan Nwara, and three first-round picks to the Toronto Raptors. And, of course, the New Orleans will be a third team as part of the deal, uh, sending Kira Lewis to the Raptors. So Pascal Siakam is on the move. The Mavericks don't have to worry about any more trade chatter when it comes to Siakam because he's now a member of the Indiana Pacers. Shout-out to Rick Carlisle, former Mavericks head coach. He gets a guy to pair with Tyrese Halliburton that should be really good. They get to keep Jairus Walker and Benedict Matherin as well. So really good deal for them, and we'll see if the Pacers are able to work out a long-term deal with Siakam going forward. But that means the Mavericks are officially out when it comes to the Pascal Siakam sweepstakes, and depending on who you are and how you felt about the Mavericks and the legitimacy of their interest in Siakam, you don't have to worry about that anymore as Siakam will remain in the Eastern Conference this time with the Indiana Pacers. But there are some names that Jake Fisher of Yahoo Sports did lay out with respect to the Mavericks' interest and what that could mean for the Mavericks in the trade deadline. Now, some of these names you have been very familiar with, namely one that used to play for the Mavericks. We'll get to him in just a few moments. But a couple of names that we'll look at before we get there are guys like P.J. Washington and Andrew Wiggins of the Golden State Warriors and the Charlotte Hornets, respectively. We'll start with Andrew Wiggins. Now, Wiggins is an interesting case because you look at Wiggins so far this year, things have not gone well for him. In Golden State, a lot of turmoil with that franchise, whether it be with Draymond Green and his suspension, the up and down play of Klay Thompson, the inconsistency that this team and the Warriors have displayed throughout the course of the year, the constant chatter about what to do with Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody. Andrew Wiggins has kind of been lost in the shuffle there. And you look at what he's done so far this season as we look per 100 possessions for Wiggins so far this season scoring. A little under 22 points per 100 possessions, shooting 42% from the field, while shooting just 29% from three per 100 possessions. And then when you look at his defense so far this year, which is something that you have been seeing as a calling card for him throughout the course of his career, especially when the Warriors made their NBA Finals run a couple of years ago, where his defensive rating was 105.4, which is terrific on the defensive end. This year, it's a career worst. 122.1, and he's got a negative 9.1 net rating so far through 36 games this season. Wiggins could probably use a change of scenery right now out of Golden State, and the Mavericks could use some additional defense. And for someone in Wiggins, he's going to get a lot of wide-open looks from Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic with their ability to dribble and get themselves the penetration needed to have guys have wide-open looks out on the three-point line. So if you're the Mavericks, Andrew Wiggins could be a buy-low option, and we've heard reporting that the Warriors may be so desperate to get rid of Andrew Wiggins that they may be willing to attach something to it in order to move Wiggins out of Golden State, which if that is the case, they, that should be an attractive maybe look for the Mavericks because they will need more versatility on the defensive end as well, a team that's been hovering between, what, 15th and 19th throughout the course of the year, they've been playing better defense as of late, getting in the passing lanes, causing deflections, and getting steals. They've been a little bit better defensively, which you've seen the up-and-down nature of this Mavericks defense throughout the course of the season and sometimes in the same game. Think about what happened against the Pelicans the other day. They hold the Pelicans with Zion Williams and C.J. McCollum and Brandon Ingram all back in the lineup. They hold them to 17 points in the first quarter the lowest point total for any opponent in any quarter so far this year. And then in the second and third quarters, they give up a combined 82 points, 42 in the second, and 40 in the third. So you've seen at times the Mavericks in terms of their defensive capabilities, the high level of defense that they've been able to play, and at times the pathetic defense they've been willing to play at times as well. So maybe for a guy in Andrew Wiggins, 
a guy who could use a different place, a different destination, maybe that reinvigorates him and what he could do for the Mavericks in terms of some ability to knock down shots when he has open looks, but also provide you some more defense. There's another name that Jake Fisher mentions, and he is in Charlotte. P.J. Washington is a name that's also been bandied about, and for a lot of Mavericks fans, a guy that could provide you some frontline help. Now, the interesting thing about Washington is he's playing with a team in the Charlotte Hornets who could be very active at the trade deadline, including moving on from Terry Rozier. Gordon Hayward could be a potential buyout candidate. But for Washington, at 25 years of age, four years in the league, averaging 13 points a game so far this year, you look at his per 100 possession number so far this season, shooting 42% from the field, shooting just 31% from three on nine attempts. So he's shooting a lot of threes, but not making a lot of them when you look at the per 100 possession numbers. Then, as you look at his defensive rating so far this year, my man's at 120.7, and he's got a negative 10.3 net rating so far this year. So not only is he not knocking down shots in volume from three, He's shooting only 42%, but on the defensive end, not giving you much as well, night in and night out through 31 games playing, nearly 29 minutes a night. So if you're the Mavericks, though, you are getting in what would be P.J. Washington nearly nine rebounds per 100 possessions, which can help you in terms of your front line. And you're going to need some additional rebounding and defensive versatility. Maybe Washington could, again, use a change of scenery, and provide you some of that with the Mavericks coming off the bench. And with the returns of Derek Live of the second and Maxi Kleba, another element of rebounding that could help this team as they need more frontline help as you go into the second half of the season. You saw the difference that Derek Lively the second made in that Pelicans game most recently, especially on the offensive glass, to be able to really help the Mavericks seal that win against the Pelicans. Maxi Kleba with his defensive versatility helps out as well. So Washington, really from a front line standpoint, can help you there. And again, with wide open looks that he's going to see playing alongside Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, any NBA player who wants to rehabilitate their career, get a change of scenery and go somewhere else, Dallas would be an attractive place to go because if you've seen with Dante Exum and Derek Jones Jr. so far this year, renaissance is in their career so far for the Mavericks. So P.J. Washington could be another option. The question being, what are you going to be willing to give up in order to get an Andrew Wiggins or a P.J. Washington? Two buy low candidates where you may not necessarily have to give up much in order to acquire each one of them. And if you're a Maverick fan, that should please you because the direction that Nico Harrison and this front office are looking in in terms of versatile options that can help you on both ends of the floor buy low potential candidates is a good thing for this front office to be looking for because now with Siakam gone out of the market, the attention turns to some of these individuals who could use a different place to be able to be contributors on a team. P.J. Washington and Andrew Wiggins are a couple of those kinds of guys. The last guy that we'll discuss today is a guy that you and I are extremely familiar with as far as being with the Dallas Mavericks, and that being Dorian Finney-Smith with the Brooklyn Nets. Of course, Dorian Finney-Smith is a fan favorite for the Mavericks and for Mavericks fans, and you look at what he's done per 100 possessions so far this year, in nearly 49 minutes of play, scoring 16 points, and on volume, shooting 40% from threes, taking nearly nine attempts per 100 possessions, knocking down 40% of them, while shooting overall 43% from the field. And you say, Kevin, what about the defensive upside of Adorian Finney-Smith, which we know is something that he brings to any team? So far this year, he's got a defensive rating of 114.4, and that is better than either one of P.J. Washington or Andrew Wiggins. So not only are you getting a known player in Dorian Finney-Smith, you're getting a guy that's knocking down threes in volume and defensively increases your upside and at 6'7", six, 6'8", six, can guard multiple positions on the defensive end. And most importantly, the chemistry and the continuity that Dorian Finney-Smith would bring to this team immediately with Luka Doncic would be a welcome sign for this team. So for me, based off of what we talked about so far, Dorian Finney-Smith may be your best option. Now, the question will be, if you're the Brooklyn Nets, what are you trying to send? What are you trying to get out of Dorian Finney-Smith in terms of a trade? The Mavericks, when you look at what they have capital-wise, they got a Rashawn Holmes, whose salary could be attractive to a team, especially if he decides to decline a player option that he would have going into the summer. 
maybe you move on from Josh Green, who at times has been really good, but at other times has not been great for this team as well. Maybe needed to buy high if you're the or sell high, if you will, if you're the Mavericks and move on from Josh Green. Jane Hardy may be a potential name that you want to move off as well to help the Brooklyn Nets get younger while they continue to build around Mikkel Bridges and Cam Thomas in Brooklyn. So there are options that you can use if you're willing to acquire a Dorian Finney-Smith. The asking price from the Nets may be a little too rich based off of what they're asking for, but it's a name that you should keep in mind if you're a Mavericks fan looking to see how this team improves going toward the NBA trade deadline. And Dorian Finney-Smith would be a welcomed name back to the Dallas Mavericks. So, there are plenty of names that are out there that you're going to be looking at, whether it be a P.J. Washington, a Doria Finney-Smith, and Andrew Wiggins, maybe to a lesser degree, a Kyle Kuzma. Well, what this team will need are guys that are versatile, can knock down shots when they have open looks, and provide you some defensive upside, along with the ability to rebound a little bit. And each of those three provides something different that the Mavericks need based on their roster composition right now. So all this to say... Nico Harrison and this front office have their work cut out for them as we are now at the halfway point of the season. And if they can continue to improve on this roster, they increase their upside as far as the top six, maybe even a top four seed in the West when they're trying to compete with the teams like the Clippers, the Nuggets, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the Oklahoma City Thunder, some of the upper echelon teams of the West so far. This year, the Mavericks have a chance to be able to improve on that. But the biggest thing for the Mavericks right now is get as healthy as you can. Hopefully, with Luka Doncic returning here soon, along with Dante Exum and others, health is going to be what the doctor ordered for this team in order to improve and play consistently night in and night out. We've talked about it plenty when it comes to this team. If they can find a way to be average defensively, they're going to be a top 10 scoring team all season long to provide you the kind of versatility that allows them to be maybe a 45 to 50 win team. They could use some additional help when it comes to their front line. And if that is the case, there are some names and opportunities to be able to do so. But all that remains to be seen over the next few weeks as we get to the NBA trade deadline, which is on February the 8th. But P.J. Washington, Andrew Wiggins, Dorian Finney-Smith, and others could be names that, if you're paying attention, could be on the Mavericks' radar. You can find me on Twitter, at Kevin Gray Sports. Be sure to download and subscribe to the Inside the Mavs podcast wherever you get podcasts for free. Like and comment on this video if you've got trade suggestions and players that you may want to see on this team, let me know, and we'll talk about it here on Kevin Gray Sports. Again, you can find me all over social media at Kevin Gray Sports and like and comment on this video. Again, appreciate you joining me here on this latest Minnesota of Inside the Mass. My name is Kevin Gray. I'll talk to you later. Peace.